In our first segment, we introduced U.S. companies who use trade shows to make international sales. Exporting is huge for us. Uh, as a matter of fact, 50% of our sales is outside the U.S. 33% of the business is uh, international, uh, and we do approximately $70 million a year. Companies with a passion for exporting understand that the national economy is shifting from domestic consumption of imports to making more things here that global consumers want to buy. Now, in my State of the Union address, I set a goal of doubling America's exports over the next five years. An increase that will support two million American jobs. Think export. There are so many things we can export. You know, so many things we can bring value to other countries and, and other partners on. And uh, I think we do that. We're well on our way to understanding you know, where the futures are and how we can be competitive as a country. Wishful thinking alone won't make this future a reality. Visionaries need helpers. And chief among them at trade shows like this is matchmaker in chief, the U.S. Commercial Service. The U.S. Commercial Service is the trade promotion agency of the U.S. government through the U.S. Department of Commerce, our parent organization. We are really not your typical government agency. We're out there to help U.S. companies do business overseas, and we do that through a very complex network, both domestically in the U.S., as well as internationally in all of the countries overseas where we have offices. And the Commercial Service has offices in more than 70 countries, including the Philippines, where Na Capitan has recruited a delegation of buyers to the NAB show in Las Vegas. I've been with the service for 13 years. We are the U.S. Commercial Service. Basically, we're matchmaking partners for U.S. companies to global markets. We're here to bridge the gap between U.S. companies and foreign buyers. That's what we do. That's what we're good at. Na and her colleagues are good at many things, and one is planning for the more than 30 U.S. trade shows they support each year. The effort is called the International Buyer Program, or IBP. They are bringing buyers to the best that the United States has to offer um, in, in our objective to increase exports. And by showing them the best, they're coming here and hopefully we're selling them the best products and technology. The attraction for overseas buyers is easy access to the best, though traveling to great U.S. cities like Las Vegas doesn't hurt. Bottom line here, how do buyers and sellers know they can trust each other? The American companies are mostly concerned with finding the right partner. And once they find the right partner and there's a good match there, then everything else kind of happens by itself. Uh, and then the partner that they find uh, goes and, and sells to the end users and then it's just it becomes an automatic process where everybody is happy. We spend time getting to know that company, we go out, we interview them, we go to visit their premises to make sure that they are indeed kind of who they say they are. Because of our location in country and our um, position as a part of the U.S. Embassy or consulate in country, we have the ability to really verify that companies um, are going to be potentially a good business partner for our U.S. customers. We were working on this project for Ukraine and we were kind of skeptic of it. So we got a hold of the Department of Commerce and they uh, helped us out and uh, checked it out. They sent the document to Ukraine and actually had somebody, one of their department heads, go down and talk to the uh, Prime Minister to find out what was going on. And they verified it for us. The U.S. government's role in creating trust and credibility also extends to the international buyers. This is a great, great, great help, uh, especially in an introduction part where they can facilitate uh, giving us credibility in front of uh, other U.S. companies because to, to come here and say we are from Egypt or Middle East, usually you don't get much attention like uh, if you are from Europe or from local uh, U.S. company. They gave me assurance that everything will be you know, okay, will be great, and they extend a lot of, uh, as I said, uh, warranty that, you know, you talk to the right persons or the right companies here, you feel uh, VIP every time. We screen the local, the local companies for partnership and that is very, very useful. The U.S. companies, and you should ask U.S. suppliers uh, how they value that from us. Establishing trust and reliability lowers the cost of risk for buyers and sellers. On paper, things are looking good for making deals. Getting to this point starts long before the show. Step one, 
recruit U.S. companies. We search out for the small, medium-sized U.S. companies that we consider to have at least a 51% U.S. content part of their product or their service, who have probably done business internationally before, although it could be somewhat just reactively. And we try to help those companies be more proactively uh, to profit through increased international sales um, by introducing them to foreign buyers. We sure do hope to facilitate some sales. Step two, provide these companies with market research. One of the first things that we do is provide them with the, in, with the market research that our colleagues overseas have, have prepared because it shows the incredible depth of knowledge and insight and opportunities um, that um, are possible in these particular markets. Kind of a deep market research, so it, it's uh, um, another a very a positive thing that the embassy has is a very strong network of contacts of real specialists, professionals in the, in the field. We've also ordered some market research that they've done for us as well. Uh, the, the commercial service then uh, helped us identify uh, seven, distri seven distributors, walked us into every single one of them in Mexico, and but at the end of the day, when we're having coffee, they said, well, we've talked to all these, and uh, before, now we've talked to them with you, and here's the one that you, we think that you should go with. And that turned into the first year of doing business about $1.8 million. So uh, they've, they've earned the, rep, the, the trust that I have in them. Step three, sellers get information on the buyers and buyers get information on the sellers in the export interest directory. We ask all of our companies, all of our exhibiting companies, are you interested in the international marketplace? What is your business objective? And what parts of the world are you interested in accessing? And then we use that, I, I send that information to all of the delegation leaders. Step four, sellers send information to buyers and buyers map out who they want to meet with and make appointments. Here is over 1,000 exhibitors, so it's, just, it's a challenge to be able to go around and um, focus on the, on the best opportunities available. So this is one way that I tell them, uh, bring your list, uh, even on, on the long flights that we have to, to, to take before arriving to Las Vegas, have a look at that and start prioritizing who are you going to meet. Checklist is, is a must. Um, if not, you will not be able to measure uh, how successful you are uh, in accomplishing your objective for a trade show. Uh, for me, I prepare who I want to meet, uh, what to discuss. I download all the uh, white paper necessary and all the questions that I want to ask the particular vendors. Okay, checklist ready, market research digested, trust and capability established. Face-to-face -face matchmaking is about to begin. First, let's get pumped up. I think if there's any message that I can leave anybody watching this um, with is that our own government in the United States has funded the commercial service. Okay, so you guys are funded with a mandate from Congress to help us out. And I think if that message gets out, any entrepreneur that has come up with a brilliant idea to solve a problem the American way, right? I mean, we are a land of creators and designers and engineers, right? And right now, more than ever, we need those folks to be able to have access to overseas markets. In segment three, we'll experience access in action when it's showtime for showtime. Thanks for watching.